Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. We'll continue reading from the 40 principles of the religion. Arba'in fi usul al-deen. And uh, we have reached the uh, subtitle, The Places in Which Backbiting is Licensed. Fi bayan mawadha lati tubahu al-ghibatu fiha. Out of necessity, of course. Imam Ghazali said, Backbiting is licensed in only six places. Let me just mention all of them, um, only the uh, briefly, and then we'll go into the details as Imam Ghazali uh, explains. So the first of them is uh, the uh, the oppressed mentioning the uh, oppression. Um, and we'll get back to this, inshallah. The second is someone whom, with whom aid is sought in changing an evil. The third is the mufti, a person, a mufti. People might think today that it's really the official uh, position. And uh, of course, today uh, we should ask the, uh, the mufti, but it could be really uh, a well-known scholar in uh, jurisprudence, who many of those uh, uh, scholars uh, might not be uh, in in the position of the officially in the position of mufti. And uh, number four is uh, warning a Muslim about another's evil. And number five is uh, when a person is known by a name in which there is uh, some deficiency. Uh, it could be the, the uh, be a nickname it could be uh, it become it could become uh, a family name and, uh, and i could explain this uh, usually uh, uh, it is related to uh, some uh, something uh, that went wrong with part of the uh, body a limb an eye uh, and we'll talk about inshallah and number six is when a person is open with his faults like really open with his faults meaning that either uh, performs the uh, wrong that which is wrong in public or uh, speaks or brags or at least uh, does not really uh, hide himself or uh, uh, hide herself and we'll get back to all of this inshallah so backbiting is licensed in only six places the first of them is the oppressed mentioning the oppression of the oppressor to the sultan in order to repel his oppression. As for mentioning it to other than the Sultan or to someone incapable of repelling it, then it is backbiting. So there is something wrong that happens to you. And if you keep chatting about it uh, to everyone that you meet, that's by backbiting. Meaning everyone that you meet and will not be able not in a position to uh, to help you to uh, to defend you to uh, bring justice. Uh, Al Hajjaj uh, was backbit, according to one of the pious predecessors, who said, "Allah will indeed take vengeance for the Hajjaj on the one who back backbit him." just as he will take vengeance on al-hajjaj for the one whom he oppressed so does it mean that uh, we don't talk about the uh, the atrocities that people performed in the past uh, This is what Imam al Ghazali is saying. Just don't, don't really uh, backbite uh, uh, people from the past. And I, I you know, I, it's quite unfortunate. I, I hear people. Uh, usually, they do the backbiting about people in office, and uh, people in office. We don't talk about the post office. We don't talk about, you know, uh, that kind of that level. Uh, 
those in office, we talk about uh, the rulers, if you will. Uh, and there are those who just simply went through the, the, their life without practically, uh, I mean, I knew uh, people who uh, lived long and uh, they did not really uh, mention uh, uh, rulers in a, in a negative way. But it could be a book of history. It could be so that uh, so that new new generations would not really repeat these things to show that this is evil. Uh, we might. Uh, we might speak when we speak about atrocities that happened in the past, um, the most recent past. Uh, I mean, we talk about, uh, for example, uh, 20th century, just as an example. Uh, we might be talking about Hitler, we might be talking about Mussolini, we might be talking about Stalin. In fact, uh, Churchill uh, himself. Uh, when he diverted the uh, the wheat from uh, the Bay of Bengal to uh, to uh, to Britain or to the uh, British uh, forces, he caused uh, a famine and um, millions died. So there are examples. So we, should we refrain from mentioning those who committed atrocities in uh, in the distant Islamic uh, uh, history? The second is someone with whom aid is sought in changing an evil. It is permissible for a person to mention something to him also. Uh, someone who's capable of uh, uh, making uh, a change, a positive change. Uh, a student, a student, a pupil um, in school could basically tell the, uh, the teacher could tell the uh, principal uh, if uh, he or she is bullied. Otherwise, the uh, bullies would not stop. That's one example. If it's a teacher that that hits the uh, the the children, maybe one would resort to uh, even to uh, the authorities outside uh, schools, uh, going to court. It depends. Sometimes there are very severe uh, cases of uh, physical punishment. The third is the Mufti. If a person needs to mention something for a question, just as Hind wife of Abu Sufyan, she said, and uh, this is a hadith muttafaq uh, narrated by both Bukhari and Muslim. So she uh, went to the Prophet وسلم, and uh, she said, Allah will indeed take, I'm sorry, she uh, mentioned in, in front of the Prophet وسلم, Abu Sufyan, meaning her husband, is indeed a stingy man. He does not give me what suffices my child and me. Should I then take without him knowing? The Prophet وسلم, said, take what suffices you and your child according to custom according according to custom one might uh, we know today uh, that which is uh, according to custom that which is customary and this is why subhanallah it's uh, it's a very beautiful uh, aspect of our religion uh, al urf so it, what is what's customary in dowry, what's customary in uh, expenditure. 
But the uh, issue here, she mentioned singeness and oppression, yet Allah's Messenger وسلم, did not censor her. All of this is complaining. However, it is permissible if there is benefit in it. So uh, she went to the Prophet because she knows that, of course, he's the Prophet. You might go to the uh, Mufti and uh, say, My husband, you might say, My wife, you might say, My son, you might say, My father, whatever is the case. It could be a neighbor, it could be, and you might uh, get an answer, inshallah. The fourth is warning a Muslim about another's evil. If one knows that not mentioning it will result in that person's testimony being accepted. Just as a person bearing witness in favor of someone mentions things, this is the case with someone engaging in business or in or marrying that person would be harmed by them therefore a person should mention something only to whomever he expects would be harmed and typically uh, typically people would go and ask uh, to verify to if if you are in the world of business and uh, people might get in touch with uh, someone's uh, former employer, for example, uh, or they might get in touch with uh, uh, a school, it could be. And sometimes they just simply get in touch with someone who knows the person who is asking the hand of, uh, of a woman. Uh, not only it's not riba, it, it's an obligation to mention if there's any uh, any behavior, anything that uh, should be known to the uh, you know to the others. Uh, imagine uh, it could it could have saved lives. Uh, except in some societies, they just don't do this. Um, it's an extreme case, but imagine there was an interview with a woman. A woman was interviewed, she was interviewed in jail, in fact. And it's been quite some time. And they asked her, uh, why did you kill your uh, first husband? And she said, uh, it was self-defense. Then she was asked, why did you kill your second husband? She also said it was in self-defense. Except that they showed in the documentary that uh, she shot him. Uh, he was still sitting in the car. She shot him with a uh, through the barrel of the gun uh, through the side of his head at point blank. Now, if that lady is released from jail, which is probably impossible, but you never know. Sure, who would become the third, uh, the third husband? This is something that is really an extreme case, but one mentions this so, so that uh, uh, people will understand that you cannot hide, you should not hide any trait, uh, you know, about any person, depend, depending on the context, as it is mentioned here. The fifth is when a person is known by a name in which there is some deficiency, such as the blear eyed or lame. Uh, in fact, in the uh, these these names uh, uh, these names are uh, well known in uh, Islamic uh, in Islamic history. Uh, here it is mentioned. I mean, general it does not refer to a specific person, but Al Amash, okay. Al Amash is a, was a was a muhaddith. Um, so he used to narrate uh, prophetic uh, tradition. 
And uh, there was one story when he himself referred, he referred to himself as Al Amash. And Al Amash, it's a it's a very famous uh, uh, story. He passed by a group of people where someone was uh, telling them uh, a story, and uh, he said, like, as if this is really a, a genuine hadith, but it was not because the Amish passed by and he did hear the person, the narrator, the storyteller, he was saying that this was, that he he got this, uh, like a chain of narrator. He did hear it from al Amish himself. al Amish went into the uh, center of the uh, circle of learning. He did something, and I don't want to go into uh, into that now, uh, ultimately, he told the uh, the uh, this speaker, Al Amash, told him, "I am Al Amash, and I did not really uh, convey this hadith to you." So he referred to himself as Al Amash, as the uh, uh, the uh, eyed No sin has been committed by someone who mentions that although using another name is more appropriate, but sometimes this is simply the, uh, it becomes a family name, and people might not notice that it's people, the same person who is using it, uh, uh, we have, and, and I'm sure that it began one day as, uh, as a physical thing, and people would make, would make, you know, a nickname out of it, and probably nothing good. Uh, you know, it, it was nothing. Then, it, I'm hundred percent sure that uh, when people use it first, they use it to insult. To it, it would be injury. Um, so it's prohibited really in Islam to uh, to nickname people in uh, something that they don't like. Uh, and as I said, we have so many family names that are just like that. Uh, Al Ama, the blind, it's a family name here. Uh, Al Kasih, the crippled. Uh, the uh, Abu Sitte, somebody who was born with six fingers. Okay, on on, on one hand, uh, at least. Uh, the, the the our family is the uh, one-eyed losing an eye for whatever reason. Uh, so, as I said, there are so many uh, you know family names, and the origin would be a nickname that is based on a physical something uh, that happened to them, and they have lost. Um, you know, uh, they lost something part of their um, physically. Okay, the sixth one is when a person is open with his faults, he does not dislike for his faults to be mentioned. Such as the effeminate or the honor of a brother. And uh, Al Hassan said, Hassan Basri, there are three for whom there is no backbiting regarding them the heretic, the sinner who is open with his sin, and the despotic ruler. The commonality between these is that they are open with their wrongdoing, so they do not dislike it being mentioned. According to the correct opinion, mentioning a sinner's act of disobedience that he conceals and would dislike being mentioned is not permissible without an excuse.
Number, uh, I would like to go into some details about the number six. Uh, the uh, the effeminate uh, today somebody who uh, is openly uh, this new LGBTQ uh, movement. Uh, for the most part, especially in the West, they are open about it. And now we have uh, literally the day before yesterday, there was a uh, like uh, an attempt to have a parade in uh, in Beirut, and people attacked the participants. A parade for gay rights, and uh, there was an attack. Uh, by uh, the soldiers of the Lord, a Christian group of uh, of uh, young men, uh, they attacked uh, um, a drag queen, a drag queen uh, show, uh, two of them at a uh, at a bar in uh, in Lebanon. Uh, so. In certain places, they might try to advance the uh, by really going public. So they are open about what they do. And uh, knowing how grave this issue is, because now there are Western governments that lobby on behalf of the LGBTQ uh, community, and uh, we have the issue of the uh, transgender as uh, uh, we don't talk about um, you know uh, the medical condition we talk about uh, people who uh, do these things uh, by choice and uh, when people uh, when people really uh, cannot continue uh, on on that path after they do uh, uh, quote unquote change their uh, uh, gender and uh, and they phys they physically they uh, either they have uh, uh, an operation it could be uh, a man who goes through a, uh, a physical uh, operation uh, and then will go on uh, hormones or it could be a woman who will have also an operation uh, removing her uh, um, breasts um, and also going on uh, hormone so that she would look like a, as much as possible like a man and he would look like a, as much as possible like a woman but that does not change their uh, genetic really uh, Reality does not change there. Uh, the fact that uh, a man remains a man, but you know, with all the things that they uh, they do, and she remains a woman um, by changing by changing his quote unquote by changing his sex, he, he will not have will not be able to have children. And there are so many things. It's uh, it's a mess. Like one one would spend really. Um, I I literally looked through uh, um, maybe a hundred and probably seven uh, genders, and there are those who went beyond these uh, the hundred and seven. So they they are open about it. They uh, so it becomes like number six. Yeah, they just mujahir we call it mujahir bil masiya um, and those people not only they do, do it public publicly they uh, make sure that uh, it reaches uh, far and wide and there are, there are there are still programs in the United States TV programs where people really go on and speak about all the what should be private but they do speak about their 
their sins, their uh, cheating on their uh, uh, spouses, they all the wrong things that they do, even when they are singing. Methods for treating the uh, self against backbiting. Treating the self in order to stop it from backbiting requires that a person reflect on the transmitted threat about it in the uh, statement of the Prophet Sallallahu of course we will deal with the whether it's a hadith or uh, uh, or not this is uh, backbiting surely faster in destroying the good deeds of the slave than fire when it consumes dry wood this is not a hadith wallahu alam there are at least two reports uh, attributing um, a statement close to this uh, by al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah. the first one uh, faster uh, in the faster in the hasanat for it like faster than fire it is the same the, the one practically it's almost the same asraf al-hasanat min narif al-hatab so practically it's equivalent to what Imam Ghazali uh, said. Uh, and the other one is Asra Fideen Rajul, that rather than consuming the, uh, the Hasanat, it consumes someone's religion, like really uh, ending up uh, bankrupt, of course. No hasanat, but many say it. So most probably it's uh, uh, a statement by Hassan al-Basri rather than attributing to the Prophet ﷺ. It is transmitted that the good deeds of the uh, backbiter are transferred to the record of the one who was wronged through backbiting. The backbiter will look at the paucity of his good deeds and the abundance of his backbiting and will shortly end up bankrupt. And the, uh, the advice that one might give is that anyone who would like to indulge in backbiting he should really do so many good deeds because he needs the uh, good deeds to uh, uh, so that his good deeds will be given to the uh, person that you uh, backbite uh, against you sin against you sin uh, you know against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in this case we talk about the uh, on the earthly uh, level Yes, and if you don't really have enough hasanat, you are going to get from uh, his or her, of course, uh, sayyat. There is a hadith that was, uh, you know, uh, mentioned by, uh, narrated by Imam Muslim uh, from the narration of uh, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, did say, he asked his companions, do you know who is really the bankrupt at the Druna Man Muflis? They said, what we know also, and my, our mind might go to the bankrupt, like in terms of uh, money, they said, Al Muflis Fina Man La Dirham Allahu Wa La Mata'a. So they said that the uh, bankrupt is amongst us is the person who does not have, and I'm going to translate it liberally now uh, by using the word uh, dime. So, so the, the bankrupt amongst us, Malla Dirham, Dirham is really a silver coin, but uh, I would love to, to use the no, does not have a dime, does not have a penny, and does not have property. Then the Prophet ﷺ said that the verily the uh, bankrupt, the Muflis from amongst my uh, Ummah, 
will come on the day of judgment with prayer and fasting and zakah. So he did he did pray, he did uh, uh, fast, he did give charity. But against the background of all these good deeds, he would uh, he would have on his record that he insulted such and such person and that he uh, attacked the uh, honor. Qadf uh, here is really accusing someone of uh, uh, doing, uh, you know, Qadf uh, al-Muhsanat, for example. وَأَكَلَ مَا لَهَادَ And he uh, took the uh, money uh, of someone um, and unlawfully. And he would have killed uh, someone. وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَادَ Spelled the blood of uh, someone. And he hit this person. وَضَرَبَ هَادَ فَيُعْطَى هَادَ مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ So your hasanat, your good deeds will be given to this. وَهَادَ مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ And also to this. Ultimately, فَإِذَا فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ If there are no more hasanat, all of them used, and still, قَبْلَ أَنْ يُقْضَى مَا عَلَيْهِ Before he uh, compensate all those whom he had, he did hurt in this life, then, they will be uh, they will he will take from uh, their wrong deeds from their sayat from their khataya uh, khataya so they will get the uh, sayat they will uh, on his uh, record and then he will be tossed into hellfire Probably, I think it's enough for for today, and we'll continue, inshallah, still with the same uh, subtopic. We'll continue, inshallah, tomorrow. Subhanakallah, wa hamdik. Nashadu wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.